perspective is the perspective of the Bible itself and the Christian community. And I, I want to look at uh, what we believe as Christians today. Now, you should know this. There's three main branches to Christianity in the world today. Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, and Protestant. We protested to some of the things the others are doing. That's why we're here tonight, you see. Now, <clears throat> but the good news is this. We all agree that Jesus, the man Jesus, found in the Old and New Testaments, is the Son of the living God. Can you say amen? <clears throat> so we believe that as Christians. Now, the importance of believing that Jesus is the Son of God is really found in the Scriptures. It's, it's, it's really right there for us. First John chapter 2, verse 22 says, Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Hello, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father. So right there the Bible says that if world religions and cults deny who Jesus Christ is as the Son of God, they don't have God. They don't have the Father, you see. And so let's get that straight right now. Praise the Lord, you see. Now the Bible teaches that, uh, that all the first preachers of the New Testament preached that Jesus was the Son of God. Peter, Paul, John, they all preached that Jesus was the Son of God. Friends, there was absolutely no confusion about who Jesus was in the minds of the early apostles. Can someone say amen? They preached that Christ was the Son of God. They knew him. Now, this central truth that Jesus was the Son of God uh, manifested in the flesh uh, was given to the church as a deposit of truth. And I'd like for you to follow me in your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. We find here that the Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy, a young pastor, and he's saying, Timothy, there's some things you need to know about as a pastor. One of them is you've got to understand the most important things about our faith. So in 1 Timothy 3, Paul writes to Timothy and says, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar. Everyone say the pillar. The pillar and the ground. Everyone say the ground. I'm going to get you involved in this message. Praise the Lord. Amen. The pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness or our faith. Number one, God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines or teachings of demons. Now, notice that the first tenet, or the first point, if you will, of this divinely inspired list of essentials about our Christian faith is that God was manifested in the flesh. Without that, we don't have nothing. And I'm about ready to show you why that's so important that you get a hold of that. You see, Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh as the Son of God. That's a direct, revel that's a direct reference to Christ coming in the flesh. God came to earth in a man, Jesus Christ. 
for John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, praise God. You see, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he was born as a human being. God came to earth, praise the Lord. And see, some of us have a hard time accepting this truth, but it's the truth. When I first got saved, and I heard that Jesus was God it just didn't compute, okay? I just didn't fully get it. Yeah, Jesus is the Son of God. I can, okay, I can buy that. But Jesus as God, I really didn't understand until I studied a little bit more. Friends, Jesus is God. Yeah. Jesus is God the Son. You see, you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God the Holy Spirit, you see. And see, so Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God. He was 100% man, and he was 100% God in one package, praise God. That's why his blood has power, because he never sinned, praise God. And he was a divine son of God, and his flesh was holy flesh offered up on that cross for you and me, praise the Lord. Amen. That's why he can be the only Savior for me and you, and there is no other. And the Bible says that the church is to be a pillar of this truth. When you think of a pillar, what do you think of? You think of a pillar is set up to hold something up, praise the Lord, on top of that pillar. This church is to be a pillar to bring forth the message of Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. You see, and when you think of the church as a foundation, the foundation of the truth, well, a foundation, if you don't dig the basement out good and you try and build a house, you're going to have a pretty weak house, everybody, you know. You see, so a foundation has got to be dug out first. The Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse uh, 10 and 11, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. See, but let everyone take heed how he builds on because no other foundation can be laid except that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So the, the foundation of our lives is Christ. Can I hear an amen? Amen. He's the Savior of the world. He's the Son of the living God. But why do we believe this as Christians? Well, we've got good reason to believe it. The Bible teaches us, number one, the first reason is that the Old Testament reveals the Son of God. You see, the Son of God is all throughout the Old Testament. You say, where? I never read it in there. Well, I'm glad you asked. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man in our image. Let us. I mean, he wasn't looking in the mirror up there. You know, I mean, he was having a conversation with the, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image. You see, and so there is, who was that? That was Christ, you see. Uh, Psalm chapter 2, verse 7 says, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. And in verse 12 it says, kiss the son, <laughs> lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Psalm 2 has the Son of God right there two times. Praise the Lord. As the begotten Son of God, which means about the resurrection of Christ, proving he's the Son, and that he's going to rule the nations. Can you say amen? And then in Daniel chapter 3, remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Oh, they wouldn't bow down, praise the Lord, to the idol that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, set up, and they put on the disco, and the music started to play, and everybody else started to do this deal and they said we're not bowing you know and so they said 
the, 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 the king changed his countenance. He said, heat the furnace seven times hotter, you know. And they heated it up so hot that when they were throwing the stuff in there to make it, make it hotter, the guys got burned up themselves. And then they bound up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they said, well, our God is able to deliver us. But if not, 